Today, we're going to be looking at debugging applications in a production environment using Fusion Reactor. Software is complex, so it's inevitable software has bugs. On top of that, the environments today are distributed, data-heavy, and often dynamic, making the reproduction of production problems almost impossible. This is why we developed Fusion Reactor's Production Debugger. It enables developers to quickly and easily gain debug access to complex environments, cutting debugging time down to just a few clicks without the need to modify or redeploy code. Our aim is to enable developers to locate defects and issues as quickly as possible in a safe and secure manner, without impacting the performance of your application. So let's take a look at Fusion Reactor's debugger in action. In this example, we have a simple page that causes a divide by zero exception. Once run, we go into Fusion Reactor and we do a refresh here. You can see at the top, this is the divide by zero CFM page. When we click on the error link, we can see the stack trace that was generated when the error occurred. Now to set a trace point. All I need to do is click here on the run page method. Fusion Reactor would normally decompile the code in this window. However, if you configure Fusion Reactor with a path to your code repository, then it will show the actual code. This is the case here, so Fusion Reactor knows where to look for the code. You'll see that Fusion Reactor highlights the line that caused the issue, making error detection really simple. So let's go ahead and set a trace point. In this case, I'm going to set the trace point on the line where the error occurred. The line is highlighted in red to indicate that the trace point has now been set. Now we run the page once again. When we do this, we can see that the page does not complete and the tab is spinning. Back in Fusion Reactor, we can see the bug icon displayed in the top of the banner. This tells us that one of our trace points is fired and we can intercept it by clicking on the icon. So let's do that. Clicking the debug icon, we are shown the debugger page, and we can see the thread which has triggered the trace point shown below. By default, Fusion Reactor gives you 60 seconds to intercept the trace point. You can see the counter showing how much time you have left, so let's click on the debug icon. Now we're shown the IDE style debugger window, and we can see the actual code where the trace point fired. It's important to note here that we entered the paths of the actual code into Fusion Reactor. We can see the path on the left-hand side, under the Sources tab. I can see the code showing the line with the trace point fired. I can see the stack frames at the lower left-hand side of the screen. I can see all the scope variables for that point in the stack frame underneath the variables window. It's important to note that if I click on another level in the stack, which is part of the cold fusion chain, then the fusion reactor will show the scope variables at that level. However, fusion reactor will not show the actual decompiled code, as showing the decompiled code fusion code would break the Adobe end user license agreement. So let's go back to the point in the stack where the issue occurred. If I open the variables array elements, I can see that we have one variable defined, which is y, and its value is zero. On the right-hand side, you can also see that I've set a watch expression, which is set on the variable y, so this is also displaying zero. I'm going to change the value here to two. Then I'm going to set a trace point lower down in my code. And I do that simply by clicking in the code window. If we now resume execution, and I open up the variable array field, I can see that x has now been created, and its value is 5 as we would expect. I can also see in the watch area that y currently has a value of 2, which is what we set it to. If we now resume execution of our code, then return to the original simple page we executed, we can see that the page now runs correctly using the value for y which we updated in the debugger dialog.
If we execute this page again, the trace point will not fire because by default it only triggers on a single thread. If we now go back to the debugger menu, we can see both of our trace points. The small icon box next to the word line indicates if the trace point is active or not. A gray box means it is not active. If we click on the icon, then we can reactivate, or we can click the edit icon. So let's do that first. The edit breakpoint dialog shows us the default settings which will be used when triggering a trace point. The first variable indicates where the trace point should fire. We can see source code file name selected, which is the name of the file we would like to debug. The source line number shows the line we selected earlier, which was line 3. The next field, trigger fire count equals 1, is very important because it means that we will only fire this trace points on a single thread. The breakpoint trigger action refers to what do we want fusion reactions to do when this trait trace point fires. In this case, we want to enable the interactive debugger and pause the thread. Finally, the thread pause time is telling fusion reactor how long it should pause this thread fault. In this case, the default is 60 seconds, which means that we would have 60 seconds to intercept the thread. If we don't click on the debug icon within this time, then the debugger will release the thread and processing will continue. Let's change the trigger action to generate an email. And then we'll run the trace points again. And then we'll take a look at what happens. I'm going to confirm that. Then we'll see that this trace point is active again, as the little icon is red. Now let's run the page again. The time error occurs as we would expect, but we didn't trigger the IDE debugger. Fusion Reactor has now sent an email to the pre-configured email address. Let's take a look. When we open up the email, we see all the request details at the top of the email followed by the stack trace from the point that the trace point fired. Then scrolling down through the email, we can see all of the scope variables where we can also see our variable Y is equal to zero. And this is what caused the problem.